This is Nurse of Death, the Lucy Letby story, a gripping true crime podcast that takes you deep into the chilling tale of allegations against Lucy Letby, a seemingly caring and dedicated nurse who harbored a dark secret. Join us as we unravel the twisted journey of a medical professional whose actions sent shockwaves throughout the healthcare community. It's the story of a nurse who went from saving lives to becoming the harbinger of death. This is Nurse of Death, the Lucy Letby story. In the hushed courtroom of Manchester Crown Court, the accused neonatal nurse, Lucy Letby, sat on the witness stand. Accused of a monstrous crime, she was charged with the murder of seven infants and the attempted murder of ten more during her tenure at the Countess of Chester Hospital. Each accusation, each chilling detail of the case, was a world away from the nurse who had only ever wanted to provide comfort and care to these fragile lives. Her dark suit seemed to swallow her small frame as she bravely faced the room, her eyes brimming with a mixture of dread and sorrow. Letby's story was one that rippled through the nation, her face in the headlines more often than not. She was depicted as a spectre in the neonatal ward, a haunting figure who used social media to track down the parents of her alleged victims. The prosecution painted her as a sinister presence, a predator who used her position to harm the vulnerable infants under her care through insidious means, such as injecting air into their bodies or administering insulin overdoses. But as Letby sat in the witness box, wiping away her tears with a tissue, she maintained her innocence. She told her lawyer, Ben Myers K.C., and the court that her Facebook searches were merely prompted by curiosity, not malice. She insisted that despite the grave charges brought against her, she had always strived to provide the best care to her patients. Every day, she arrived at work with the intent to help, not to harm. The 33-year-old nurse was visibly shaken as she spoke, her voice quivering with emotion. The accusations had taken a severe toll on her mental health, she confessed, leading her to develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Her dreams and aspirations for the future had been shattered, replaced by a bleak and uncertain path. Letby's parents, John and Susan, watched their daughter from the public gallery, their faces etched with worry and disbelief. Opposite them sat the families of the alleged victims, their expressions a stark contrast of hardened resolve and pain. During the trial, evidence including diary excerpts and photographs from Letby's bedroom were presented. Among these was a series of notes on coloured post-its, some carrying disturbing messages like, I am evil, I did this. Letby explained these as expressions of her inner turmoil, her guilt and feelings of incompetence. She felt that she had somehow failed these babies, that she had made an unforgivable mistake, and these notes were her way of expressing the words she couldn't voice out loud. Her removal from the neonatal unit was a pivotal moment, she recalled. It severed her ties with colleagues she considered friends and shook her confidence to its core. She was left to question her self-worth and even contemplated suicide. The once vibrant nurse had been reduced to a shell of her former self, a broken woman grappling with the enormity of her situation. During her testimony, Letby also shared details about her personal life. She spoke of her loving parents and her childhood in Hereford, of her dreams to work with children, and of being the first in her family to attend university. She reminisced about her early days at the Countess of Chester Hospital, the excitement of her first work placements, and the joy she felt when she became a Band 5 nurse. It was a stark contrast to her current state— a woman accused of unthinkable crimes and facing the prospect of life behind bars. Throughout her testimony, Letby remained adamant about her innocence. She insisted that the notes and messages were not confessions, but reflections of her self-doubt and guilt. She explained that her self-loathing stemmed from the feeling of being deemed incompetent, not from actual guilt of the crimes she was accused of. She denied any malintent, Lucy's voice broke as she admitted how the accusations had shattered her life and left her with post-traumatic stress disorder. Her dreams of a bright future had been extinguished, she said, and the vibrant woman she once was had been replaced with a shell of her former self. For the first time since the trial began seven months prior at Manchester Crown Court, 
She shared her story with her parents, John and Susan, watching from the gallery. The founding members of the alleged victims sat nearby, their gazes firmly locked on Lucy, awaiting her testimony. Previously, the court had presented images of her bedroom and passages from her 2016 diary, where the accused had scribbled notes about some of the children she was alleged to have harmed. A collection of notes, written on vibrant post-its, added to the emotional gravity of the scene. When questioned about a note which read, I am evil, I did this, Lucy responded, I felt at the time that if I'd done something wrong, I must be such an evil, awful person. I'd somehow been incompetent and had done something wrong which had affected those babies. I felt I must be responsible in some way. I think looking back on it now, I was really struggling, and this was a way of me expressing what I wasn't able to say to anyone else. Surrounded by two women prison officers in the witness box, she viewed her removal from the neonatal unit in the early summer of 2016 as a cataclysmic event. It severed her ties with colleagues whom she regarded as friends and led her to question her worth, causing her to contemplate suicide. Lucy discovered the allegations against her via a letter from the Royal College of Nursing. Just as she was filing a grievance against the NHS Trust, her employer since January 2012, it was sickening. I just couldn't believe it, she told the court. I don't think you can be accused of anything worse than that. I was just devastated. I just changed as a person. My mental health deteriorated. I felt isolated from my friends and family on the unit. Hospital administrators had advised her to communicate only with three colleagues she identified, two female nurses and a registrar, the man she confessed in her notes to being in love with. She confessed to being unable to sleep without medication and having been on antidepressants since the time of her first arrest in July 2018. I didn't want to live. I thought of killing myself, she admitted, her voice barely a whisper. In the subsequent months, her mental health spiraled downwards, and she was no longer the woman she used to be. The hopes that I have for the future, everything has just gone, she revealed with a trembling voice, her life had transformed completely. She disclosed that she had been detained in four different prisons since her third arrest in November 2020. Every day of her trial, now in its 26th week, involved a three-hour return journey. The vivid memory of the police, first arriving at her semi-detached house, less than a mile from the Countess of Chester Hospital, still haunted her. Her father, David, had been staying with her when the officers knocked at the door at 6 a.m. They told me I was being arrested for multiple counts of murder and attempted murder. They quickly handcuffed me and took me away, she recalled. The chilling echo of the past reverberated when she was arrested again at her parents' home in Hereford on June 10, 2019. It was a mirror image of the time before, with loud banging at the door. It was the most, the scariest thing I'd ever been through, she added. Her face paled as she continued. I thought I was living in some kind of twisted nightmare. But every morning, I woke up and the nightmare was still there. It was, it was my life. Lucy's lawyer, Peter Griffiths QC, guided her through the timeline of her deteriorating mental state and her work at the neonatal unit. His questioning focused on the allegations, the subsequent investigations, and how she felt about the events that had transpired. Lucy had joined the Countess of Chester Hospital as a newly qualified staff nurse. She spoke fondly of her time there initially, cherishing the camaraderie with her colleagues and the opportunity to care for vulnerable newborns. It was a job she had always wanted, ever since she was a little girl. Yet, she struggled with her deteriorating mental health as the allegations surfaced. Her notes, she explained, were not a confession but a product of her escalating guilt and self-blame. She was distressed, constantly questioning if she had inadvertently done something wrong that led to the baby's tragedies. Every single baby that died, I asked myself, did I do something wrong? Could I have done something different? She confessed, her voice trembling. But I could never think of anything I did that could have caused harm. She vehemently denied intentionally harming any of the babies, saying that she had always done her best to take care of them. She found the suggestion that she could have hurt them unfathomable and disgusting. 
Lucy further explained how her notes were a means to express the guilt she felt. Her mental health was deteriorating, she was grappling with feelings of worthlessness, and she was falling into a dark abyss of self-blame. She believed she was evil, not because she had harmed anyone, but because she felt she had failed those in her care. The trial was adjourned for the day, leaving the courtroom in a heavy silence as Lucy was led away by the prison officers. The testimonies had painted a somber picture of a woman on the brink, struggling with the weight of accusations she vehemently denied. This is Nurse of Death, the Lucy Letby story, a gripping true crime podcast that takes you deep into the chilling tale of allegations against Lucy Letby, a seemingly caring and dedicated nurse who harbored a dark secret. Join us as we unravel the twisted journey of a medical professional whose actions sent shockwaves throughout the healthcare community. It's the story of a nurse who went from saving lives to becoming the harbinger of death. This is Nurse of Death, the Lucy Letby story.